Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. This is Dr. Nelly Glusman. I am so excited to be here with you today to speak to you, uh, to speak to you with doc the founder of a Tiny Help, Cheryl Suhoy, who has been creating a magnificent product. And so many of, of you have been asking about gut health testing. Um, so I, I'm so, so excited to have Cheryl on uh, because I know she's very busy running and, and, and creating an incredible, incredible, incredible tool that we can all use, in my opinion, at this point. So we'll just jump right in. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you so much for being here today in the Eczema I'm, Rescue Club. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I just joined your community too on Facebook and so active and, and definitely a lot of parents helping each other out, which is great to see. Oh yes, that's that that's that's why we're here to to share advice, to work on reversing eczema, to help our kids, to help each other. So thank you for joining. Yeah. Um, so Cheryl, you have an incredible story, and I I heard about it because I went to some of the practitioner um, education and trainings that that Tiny Health has been offering. Can you please share with the community because it's so inspiring? What inspired you to develop Tiny Health? Yeah, first of all, uh, I'm also an eczema mom. My daughter, she's now four and a half. She had eczema at six months old when she uh, first started solids. That's usually when eczema happens, I've learned. Uh, but even before that, um, when I was pregnant with her, my first child, um, I, you know, I was kind of like obviously going the conventional route and my OBGYN gave me antibiotics for um a, a UTI that didn't happen yet, just in case you have a UTI because your bacteria count is high. So midway through my course, I actually got UTI and she had to switch me to a higher dose. So that was interesting that I now knowing what I know, I would have been more cautious about antibiotics, especially during pregnancy. Now that I know how it affects the pregnant gut and hence the baby, um, that I would have tried other means. But um, I, my baby was breached. My daughter was breached. So I knew that the likelihood of me having a C-section with her would be higher. So I uh, dived into the research around how a C-section could potentially affect a baby's lifelong health and um, realized and learned that the, the microbiome passes on from mom to baby at birth. And that is the first instance where the very sterile baby um, at birth in the womb gets flushed with the mom's vaginal microbes. So the vaginal health of the mom is really important. And the gut microbes come through the fecal fluid um, through labor. So understanding that mechanism, I actually opted, even you know, though I know I would I may be faced with a C-section, I had uh, I've gone, I went through labor because I knew that um, having that first flush of um, an exposure from the mom's microbes would help. Uh, at least, you know, help her have a milder eczema. So uh, then I, I kind of like, you know, learned that it affects the baby's immune system um, in the first 1000 days and how that leads to potentially atopic march, which is basically this umbrella of allergic diseases that usually starts with eczema. And kids who have eczema has a higher uh, risk of getting food allergies uh, and then asthma by the time they're five to six years old, and then hay fever as an adult. What was really profound for me in my research is that this means that their immune system is responding haphazardly to dietary and environmental allergens, right? Normally, if your immune system was kind of developed correctly, uh, then your body would be responding to these allergens correctly. They're not thinking that um, a foe is, is like kind of a friend is a foe and, and likewise. So understanding that I, I kind of sought to uh, research what interventions I can do post C-section to restore her gut health. And I found that there's a bunch of things like breastfeeding, certain strains of probiotics, uh, certain lifestyle changes and dietary changes that you can make to restore a baby's gut. And by one year of age, if the C-section signature, there's something called a C-section signature that um, babies who did not get the right flush of microbes at birth have. And by the way, we see a lot of vaginal births having a C-section signature too, for whatever reason. Um, by one year of age, if you manage to restore that or get rid of the C-section signature, then the, the baby's risk for asthma is reduced by 3x. So I was trying to look for a gut test for babies at that point to measure because you can't improve what you can't measure. How do you know you're doing the right things? Um, there were tests for adults. There were gut tests for adults, but not for babies. And I learned that 
whatever is healthy for adults is the opposite for babies. So you can't, it's incomparable. You can't, cannot take a, an adult gut test to, to use it for babies. Um, and so fast forward two years later, I was pregnant with my son. And this time I wanted to do it right. I, I told myself the world needs a microbiome test for babies. And so I decided to start one a month after he was born. And I recruited nine moms uh, who was around uh, giving birth around the same time I was. We measured their uh, pregnant gut and uh, vaginal microbiome. And then the babies at birth and um, at um, intervals up to two years of age. My son is now two and a half years old. So Tiny Health was, is about that old as well. Uh, and here we are, we, we, we um, our first five hires were all scientists. I'm not a doctor myself, but we have a huge team of um, microbiologists and pediatric experts. Um, such as yourself, a lot of functional uh, holistic practitioners as well, who's part of our larger community. Um, and we started selling Tiny Health uh, gut tests uh, in April this year, in 2022. Uh, so it's been a wild ride. There's been a huge um, demand from parents and practitioners for a pediatric gut test. And I can, yeah, I can share more about uh, the details. So uh, some of us know what gut health testing is because we speak so much about it. And I, I mean, that's really the base of how we restore body's health ability to, to, to transform eczema. But some of us don't know what gut health testing is. So take mm -hmm. us all the way back to what is gut health testing? Yeah, so it, it comes from uh, basically your gut is where a lot of microbiome, the microbiome lives in and on us, our skin microbiome, there's an oral community, there's a vaginal community, there's a gut community. Basically, there's um, 38 trillion microbes living in and on us that influences our, our health and well-being. And this, this is formed in the first uh, 1,000 days of life, and you get it from usually the mother. Um, so the stool community is representative of your gut and gut has the most studied microbes and the most diversity of microbes basically in a human being that has associations with um, health or disease. And so um, the way you would take a, a stool sample from a, a baby, obviously it's pretty easy if you have a, a soil diaper, this is just mustard. <laughs> this is our swabbing mechanism uh, that you get in the mail, it's an at-home test. So you just swab from a, a diaper and then you throw it into um, an envelope and a prepaid envelope and you drop it off in the mailbox and our lab receives it, processes it. And in about a month, you'll get your results back. Um, for an adult or a toddler, an older kid, um, you can sample directly from the, the toilet paper, basically when you when you do your number two um, and you just swap a little bit from it too. So same, same way, very easy. A lot of other stool uh, tests require you to scoop uh, some stool out, which is kind of gross. Uh, we have a, a much superior testing met method. Awesome. Um, so what kinds of kids or babies or even adults can benefit from gut health testing? Frankly, everyone. Um, we, we believe that it's important to get a baseline sample. Basically, what is the state of your gut right now? Um, what are your healthy and you're just trying to improve and see what else is there? Because a lot of times you don't get symptoms until later, right? So you kind of like, you want to know what's, um, what is the root cause of any future issues and you want to see it now so you can improve your health and or make sure you're kind of not high in any uh, not imbalance in in any sort of specific bacteria uh, and then if you do have some symptoms or some conditions uh, that you're working through like eczema food allergies and then it is important to see what is potentially being what is potentially triggering it maybe you have a higher level of some opportunistic pathogens, maybe there's a lack of beneficial bacteria that is protective of the baby's immune system. Um, but I would say that in the first 1000 days is the most important. You talk about restoring uh, people's gut or kind of reversing eczema, which is possible, frankly. Um, however, there is a window of influence and the window sort of closes, like gets smaller and smaller, the older the child is. So in pregnancy, it really is the largest opportunity to pre prevent, right? Past prevention, when a baby's born, I would say in the first six months, 
and maybe in the first year is where there is really that opportunity to reverse um, or even prevent. In the first three months is when you can actually still prevent. So pregnancy and first three months you can prevent when you detect maybe higher levels of some specific bacteria that's very correlated with eczema or maybe there's a lack, complete lack of beneficial bacteria, which we, we do see in a lot of samples, unfortunately, in eczema samples. And then the three to six month period is when hopefully you're still breastfeeding and you can still impact the gut with certain probiotics if necessary. And then six to 12, 12 to two, again, that window becomes smaller and smaller. And then after three years old, between three and five years old is when the gut reaches adult maturation meaning that kind of the trajectory of growth or, or kind of changes development in the baby's gut slows down. And when you take a like four-year-old um, kid sample and say the mom or the dad, it looks almost the same. <laughs> um, and so what that means is it doesn't mean you can't change your microbiome. That's the good thing about the microbiome as opposed to human genetic DNA, which you can't change. You, you inherit the DNA from your parents, and that's it. You can't do anything with it. With the gut microbiome, you can always change it. Um, it's just that it takes a lot more discipline to change, completely shift the community of the microbiome than between five, three to five years of age and, and beyond. Um, and so you have to be disciplined about certain dietary changes, certain lifestyle changes, certain um, like... Uh, yeah, supplement changes, you have to do it for a lot longer, maybe three to six months to see it taking effect versus a, ba a baby, you can really do something for a month and you eat tests and you see drastic changes. I love how it's easy to retest because it's not so expensive compared to other testing. And that that's, you know, you don't have to go to, it's direct, anyone can do it home. You have professional answers it takes the guesswork out of what um, supplements to take, what probiotics or foods, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about what, what results would look like for someone that's doing this kind of testing? Yeah, yeah, because um, um, I'm a mom uh, with an eczema kid, so I kind of knew that uh, the world needs this, um, you know, that it's not gated by practitioners or some sort of need to visit a doctor. I wanted to make this very accessible and affordable and obviously, so our, our retail price is $199. Uh, I believe you have a code that you can give at the end of this um, call that's $20 off. We want to make this super approachable compared to other tests, which is also, I can get into the technology using an older, outdated technology for measuring overall gut health. It's it's like $399 um, for $350, three, like even $450. Uh, they may be measuring some other metrics as well, some, some other immune metrics. Um, we are strictly doing microbiome. Um, however, it, it is very affordable to retest as well. And, and, you know, I would say that one sample is interesting to get the baseline. Really, the impact is in the second sample. Mm -hmm. When you see, you know, when you get that for example, you see the baseline, as I mentioned earlier, and we give you recommendations from a dietary perspective. If you have a baby that's still breastfeeding, uh, you know, obviously breast milk is always impactful. Um, however, your formula feeding or supplementing with formula, there are cer certain brands of formula that are better for the baby's gut. Uh, that we can recommend as well. And then beyond that, when the baby's starting solids, we do give a lot of dietary recommendations specifically if they need it. If you don't see any, that means your kid is probably fine uh, doing, you know, continue doing what they're, you're doing. Um, we give specific brands of probiotics, specific strains that you maybe your child may be lacking or you may be lacking. Um, and frankly, we do recommend certain brands, but if you find the same strains in other brands, you can use that too, because it's all about the strain level uh, bacteria that you should be supplementing, not really, you know, or, or the formulation really, uh, not necessarily the kind of the brand specifically. So, and then, and then beyond that, we give lifestyle recommendations too. Um, for example, uh, for eczema, like, you know, uh, we recommend certain hypochlorous uh, acid treatment rather than steroids, because that could have un unintended effects and things like that, that, that we've seen really helpful for parents as well. So the recommendations, once the results come back, are specific to age, whether or not a baby is being breastfed or was breastfed, the type of delivery that they had, whether vaginal or C-section, specific to their symptoms as well, right? 
like yeah, what the yeah. problem is and yeah. specific to where they are in their their um, dietary development. And so yeah. it's very, very specialized to your child. The biggest question we get inside the eczema rescue club, because we work with transforming eczema from the inside out is what's the probiotic? And I mean, of course I have my favorites that I think are very potent and they're great in general, but one solution is not necessarily the right one for every child. So, you know, that's, that's where supplements could be amazing tools, but we could also just be wasting our time and energy and resources, giving the wrong thing and hoping for the best. And as a functional medicine practitioner who has been using functional medicine testing, gut health testing, urine organic acid testing, um, it really took me a little while to like transition to, you know, to, to being open to testing that is direct to consumer. But I have to say that this is the only uh, testing that I've been recommending in my practice to my patients, because I feel like it's the only one that is specific to babies and kids. Oh, and also, do you, you also started uh, testing expecting mom's vaginal flora, correct? Which yes. is so exciting because <laughs> prevention is everything. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, especially for eczema, frankly, or the whole atopic March umbrella. Uh, so we see some vaginally born babies, breastfed babies having really bad guts too. And then we try to recommend the mom doing the test. I know it's a lot of pressure on the mom. I'm like, well, what about the dads, right? Uh, I mean, dads certainly have impact too, but later in life, um, they do transfer. If you live in the same household, dads do transfer the microbiomes too. But primarily... Um, the route is through the mom. So when we see a, a baby's gut not, you know, bas- basically when the baby's lacking beneficial bacteria, the mom was lacking it too. And that was the case for me. So I remember I said, I, uh, when my son, I was pregnant with my son, that was when I had the idea for Tiny Hell. So then I actually started testing my gut during pregnancy and I, ha- I was lacking this bacteria that is supposed to make up 30 to 90% of my baby's gut. So then I knew that I actually needed that strain. I supplemented um, with a probiotic with that strain for myself during pregnancy. Uh, And then, uh, you know, the vaginal community is really important too. So we see a correlation between um, a less healthy vaginal flora with preterm labor and other, you know, uh, pregnancy conditions. And it does somewhat influence the the seeding of the baby because that's when the baby first passes through is the vaginal canal. And then, and then the gut comes in and seeds the baby. So it, it is really a combination that really helps see the baby. Uh, and, and next year, we're trying to do a clinical study around that pregnancy group for prevention. Um, but we have also adult gut tests uh, for regular adults, like dads want to test too. And if the mom is postpartum and thinking about another baby in the future, we also have a, a regular gut test for that. Uh, we have a, a test for older kids between three to 17 years of age, because the older sibling of the the younger baby wants to test. And again, like we have a lot of families testing their whole family, family, because gut health, you know, the the changes that you want to make in the family affects every family member. Um, So improving the whole family's gut health is, is a lot of what our parents come to us for. And it's, it's, it's also, so you can retest in an affordable way, which is really good because even going to see a functional integrative holistic naturopath that does functional medicine testing is a, is a really big cost just to get testing that is not really specific to kids. And then you have to, it's just like completely different range of pricing. And I, I have a hard time thinking about taking like myself to a functional medicine doctor for adults mm-hmm. because I'm like, well, is it really worth it? Because I won't be able to retest as easily. And you could really just, it's just a whole different situation. And the information is very open to interpretation. Here mm-hmm. you get exactly what foods to have mm-hmm. to optimize gut health for your child in a specific way to reverse eczema and other chronic medical conditions that are related to the foundation of health, gut health. Yeah. And and you don't spend energy and giving them and time and money, your biggest resource, time, biggest resource for your child that's growing, time, giving the wrong probiotics that is mm-hmm. might be great, but not necessarily what your child needs. Oh, and that's I, the only way to know. Yeah. I want to talk about probiotics because you mentioned Good. that. Uh, before that, I actually for families who want to test, we have a 
basically a premium membership uh, called Tiny Plus, where you pay $1.99 for the annual membership and you get two free consult calls with our microbiologist or our pediatric um, medical director or me sometimes. And you get the test at $1.49. So it's discounted $50 off per test from $1.99 to $1.49. So a lot of families who do uh, who want to do three, four, or more samples, they, they join Tiny Health. But back to probiotics. So th this is also very profound for me. You would think that, oh, everyone should take probiotics, right? But for infants, especially under uh, one year, we, we don't think that's true. Oh, we know that's not true because we see the, the data now that we have thousands and thousands of samples. Um, if the baby was born with enough beneficial bacteria, they don't need it. If you give them... Uh, probiotics that then pushes out their natural strains is actually less effective at, at digesting breast milk because the function of the baby's uh, gut bacteria in the first six months is to digest breast milk. That's the only food they're eating or, or formula technically, but formula is lacking certain nutrition and like HMOs, which are prebiotics to the probiotics. So um, early on, if, if the baby doesn't have certain bacteria, they can't digest breast milk as effectively. So we see that if, if they are supplemented with probiotics, um, it may push out their natural strains and it becomes less effective for digesting breast milk. However, a lot of babies, especially who have eczema and food allergies, are lacking this, this bacteria, this crucial bacteria. So they do need this probiotic strain or um, basically four strains that we look at. Uh, for bifidobacteria strains that are very efficient at digesting breast milk. Um, and I'll just share it with you. It's, it's B. infantis, B. brevi, B. longum, and B. bifidum. Um, you see this very commonly in probiotics in the market, but again, not pro all probiotics are equal. A lot of them are lacking strain level information, which is what we want to see, or maybe the CFU or the quantity um, of life organism in the probiotic is not enough. So we do have guidance around all, all those um, specific like, you know, doses and things like that. Um, so again, yeah, not all babies need probiotics. So really, instead of like probiotics being a one size fits all, as you mentioned, or being the standard of care, so to speak, the testing we, we believe should be the standard of care, because then you can give precise supplementation to the baby. And frankly, I mentioned some babies who are born with a lack of the beneficial bacteria. So you supplement with probiotics in the early days if you're an, if it's an infant, one month, maximum two months supplementation should be enough. Then you retest. And oftentimes we see the gut community changing completely. And then we recommend that you stop. You don't continue. Like you mentioned, you know, you don't have to spend money. It's not just money, uh, you know, kind of spending on the probiotics. You're also giving it to a baby. It's not easy. I try, I try, you know, it's, it's with a syringe or adding it to, to pump milk. Um, it, it is something it is, else to do. It is something else to do. So frankly, one to two months with the right probiotics, you, you retest and you see it being now the baby's got being balanced and what it needs, you kind of lay off it. You're good. And then you retest at important intervals. Uh, six months when they start solids and see how that affects the baby's gut or maybe eight months once they're established. Uh, one month, oh, sorry, one year is an, a very important biomarker for the child. As I mentioned, the C-section signature, which could, uh, which we see appearing in vaginally born babies too. One year of age is when we see the asthma biomarkers to see if your, your child's immune system has been in a way corrected or restored from that early dysbiosis. Um, and then, you know, we would say for just for like checking in every six months would be good, but kids get sick. They get ear infections. They may get antibiotics. They may get, um, they may enter a new daycare and they get exposed to a lot more bacteria then. Good time to check in when they, whenever there's a major shift in life, ma major dietary changes, medication or um, condition. Those are all the, 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 the times that are to consider testing yeah. mm -hmm. or preventative. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Um, I have a few questions inside the group. A few have a few minutes to answer them. Okay. So Katie asked, um, Katie asked, she let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, great question. I actually had the same one. Um, Katie asked, I'm exclusively breastfeeding my five-month-old and I'm getting ready to introduce salads. Should I hold off until taking the test to introduce salads? Uh, no, I mean we we recommend solids at six months. 
we noticed a, a difference in some say four months, some say six months, um, but only we believe only allergens. Uh, very important to introduce allergens between four to six months to prevent allergies, but do it with care. If your child has eczema, they are more likely to have food allergies. Uh, but we, the, the current food um, allergy or allergen recommendation is, uh, you know, again, there's a, we, we kind of like found that there's a, a very varied kind of like recommendation, but it's, it's really important to introduce it quickly enough. There are supplements that you can add to do that. Uh, but breastfeeding compared with breastfeeding along with allergen in, introduction is your best bet to, to like uh, prevent, prevent it. But no, back to the question, you don't have to wait because uh, okay. we do think that it is very time driven for solid introduction and allergen introduction. Uh, but either way, I think, you know, if you can get that first gut sample in, depends what you want to see, right? If you want to see the state of their gut before um, solid introduction, then definitely take one now because it will change after. But babies, you, you know, they, they take a while to, to be to get onto solids, right? Like my son, especially if they're exclusively breastfeeding, uh, my son didn't even establish his solids until eight to nine months. He was pretty happy with the breast milk. Um, and it's interesting if there was uh, kind of like in C-section babies, we see that the maturation of their gut is a little bit accelerated. So they're more, in some sense, anecdotally more ready for solids earlier. Um, so they transition to solids a little bit earlier. And when we see that, correlating in the, the gut test as well. So really, really interesting. How long does it take to get results? So we're, we're always optimizing that uh, because we're using the, the best technology out there. It takes, you know, we, we promise customers four to six weeks. Right now we are releasing data around uh, three to four weeks, depending on, you know, now we are, we're, we had such a huge um, demand from Black Friday. We had a huge Black Friday sale. It's the only time we do a sale. Um, so, so we are a little bit like on the longer side now, but usually about four months, four weeks. And there's an expedited option as well. There's an expedited option that will cut it down to two to three weeks. So okay. usually at the two week mark. Is it only available in the U.S.? Tiny health testing? Canada as well. We were experimenting with um, other countries. We did for a little bit Australia, UK, and other countries, but uh, we can't do a prepaid label. So they have to ship it on their own. And we found that when that happened, there was a lot of confusion and delays and, you know, then us not being able to track samples back to our lab. So it was just too much for our customer support team to handle that we, we just decided to limit it to the U.S. and Canada. Okay, great. So um, where do you see the future of gut health testing, like for kids, for adults? Where, mm -hmm. And what is your dream for tiny health for the future, for your clients, for the industry in general? Yeah, it's a huge yeah. one. Um, the more data we get, the more we're confident that this is so impactful for lifelong health, that it doesn't make sense for this not to even be a routine test, frankly. Uh, so, you know, you, you, when you get pregnant, you get all these routine DNA testing. So the, the, the dream and the vision is that when you do get pregnant, you get a tiny health gut test and vaginal tests. Uh, and when you, you take your child to the pediatrics office, you are getting a gut test at these, you know, um, milestones, right? Like, you know, just it's the same as you get those growth milestones with the, the weight and the height, you should get a microbiome maturation milestone chart. Um, so that's the three to five year kind of vision. And we're working towards that with um, certain, you know, um, partners, I would say, and also uh, launching a clinical study next year that will help with that. Um, but yeah, I think like really that, that means accessibility, more accessibility, even when this test is able to be supported by insurance companies. Yes. Oh, that, I, I just got really emotional because um, I, I, for a while now as a practitioner working in the realm of chronic illness in kids, I, I didn't see anything getting better or changing until I realized that having this knowledge is the most powerful thing you can do as a parent. It's really great to, you know, use foods and different supplements and eat healthy and eat clean, but but having that customized, very customized and accessible approach is the only way I can see the epidemic of chronic childhood illness diminishing. So I'm so excited about what you're doing. And I'm so grateful, so grateful. I, what you created is 
the future of medicine and the future of our kids' health. And I could finally like see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And it's the it's been a while since I saw that. I mean, it so thank you so so very much for joining us here today and for doing what you're doing. I can't not even imagine how busy you are with how fast everything is moving in tiny health. And mm -hmm. I really truly applaud you for the incredible service to humanity that you are doing as the founder of Tiny Health. No, so, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone is interested in um I linked the in in uh getting gut health testing for your little one or yourself. Um I linked uh the link below to for a $20 off coupon for a single test to Tiny Health. Just make sure you use the code and I'll be posted again. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, uh, can I can I shout out something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can totally mention. So we have a research edition out. So if you go to our page and uh, click on shop and research edition, it is for any any babies or kids who have eczema, allergies, or any sort of like chronic condition related to allergies. Um, you can opt in to enter our research uh, or consent to our research uh, to see. You know, th then we you know the aim here is to improve our diagnostics or kind of insights for this group, really the allergies, right? The eczema and all that. And in the future, also kind of like the segue into the vision, apart from being routine, we want to get into microbiome therapeutics in the future. So hopefully we can discover something that can truly help treat um, eczema from the gut out uh, and really help a lot more parents. So join the research edition kit if you can, and when you do buy that gut test, um, that Blossom 20 coupon code is applicable to um, any of our tests. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was so lovely to connect with you. And big thank you again for being here and found, fi founding, finding <laughs> um, Tiny Hell. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nelly. And, and thanks, everyone else, for watching. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.